I actually have like a ton of thoughts on the Texans and CJ Stroud in particular. And it's, it's really conflicting to me, Nick, because I, lo- I'm like the biggest Texans hype guy in, in the national media. I think this year, like I am high, I'm really high on the Texans. I think the Texans have a chance. I want I'm going to bet the Texans to win the division. I think it's like 10 to one to win the I AFC see. South. It's, it's very spicy, but it's like, I mean, ja- Jackson stuff can go wrong for Jacksonville, right? They have Walker Little, who played really well, second year uh, tackle, I believe. Yeah, second, second or third year on left tackle with Cam Robinson suspended four games. Don't get me wrong, I think the Jags win the division, but I think the Texans are going to be a lot better than people think. Um, we did our Texas Pick Six podcast preview with uh, one of their local an- anchors, and um, he he said that we were like, you know, describe the differences with D'Amico Ryan's versus you know previous regimes. And he was like, D'Amico Ryans is serious. Whereas the last two guys were just not taken seriously, right? And Lovey Smith and and David Cully, guys you sort of knew were going to be one-year wonders. Um, Bobby Slowick, pass game coordinator for the San Francisco 49ers under Kyle Shanahan. Like this offense has a, my only concern is that CJ, I don't know if I trust CJ Stroud, but I didn't trust Justin Fields either. And then I kind of got in on him in a weird way, very similarly to how I kind of got in on C.J. Stroud. I have concerns that uh, Cal McNair sort of forced them to to draft C.J. Stroud, and, and so that way they could trade up and get Will Anderson. I think that's a bit of a problem. But this Texans team with that offensive line, Damian Pierce, Devin Singletary at running back, Michi's back, you know, Nico Collins. Like the, the, the pass catchers aren't great. Dalton Schultz, so a really interesting ad. Noah Brown was underrated. I, I mean, like – I don't think I would go over CJ Stroud's passing yardage because I, with D'Amico Ryan's and, you know, a Kyle Shanahan style coach, I, I would expect that we see a lot of runs and that they lean on the run and try to be good on defense where they brought in a bunch of veterans. So I don't want to go over on the CJ Stroud numbers, but I'm very bullish on the Texans win total over and the Texans as a, a pretty I mean, pretty big price to win that division. I've been playing, I've actually been playing fantasy football literally, literally. Since the 90s, since like the mid 90s, I have been playing fantasy football. And I don't think there is any name that I see that gives me more fantasy football PTSD than the third running back on the depth chart for the Houston Texans. Let me take you back in time 2019, year one, you better, you bet. Week 16, fantasy football Super Bowl. Prior to the schedule expanding to uh, to 18 games, week 16 was the fantasy football Super Bowl. Monday night football in Minnesota. The Green Bay Packers traveling to play the Minnesota Vikings. Hurt for Minnesota, Dalvin Cook. Also hurt for Minnesota, oh, yeah. Alexander Madison. Enter preseason training camp stud. Mike, Mike Boone? Boone. Oh, yeah. That year, I played Mike Boone over Brashad Perriman, who caught like a touchdown and went for 100 yards on a Saturday Tampa Houston game with Jameis Winston and Deshaun Watson. Mike Boone played maybe one or two series before they pulled his ass out of the game because he absolutely sucks and cost me a fantasy football championship. So, really, we think Mike, Mike Boone and Devin. Devin Singletary, our threats to Damian Pierce on this Texans running back group is the Damian Pierce show. Uh, da- eight ninety nine and a half. They put Dave, they put Damian he, Pierce on the tickets. They put he, him on the tickets. He's the something. guy. He makes it healthy to week one, and this is the number. This is an easy over on Damian Pierce. I wouldn't bet any other over on any of these Texans running backs or any of these AFC South running backs. Damian Pierce is an easy click, assuming that he makes it healthy to week number one against the Baltimore Ravens. Easy click for me. Uh, you said you had your three favorite over unders. You gave us one, the Steelers over. I'm going to take the. I'm going to take the, the low hanging fruit here, Ross. What are the other uh, the other two win totals you like? Well, I saw your tweet, so I, I was prepared. I saw the tweet that you're going to ask me about futures and win totals. Like, oh, I better look at it and make sure I have some. I, I, I got two more. <laughs> Interestingly, they're both AFC. And you guys know, I, I'll, I'll make my official win total bets on the Even Money podcast, which you've both been on in a few weeks. Um, I kind of like the Ravens under 10 and a half. Ooh. There's a lot of Ravens love right now. There's a lot of Ravens hype. They're going to, you know, spread it out more. Lamar Jackson says more throwing, less running. I had a question for you guys. You know that meme, that guy that goes, you sure about that? You sure about that? Like, are, 
are we sure <laughs> that that's the best move for the Ravens? I mean, I, I've seen enough games where it's third and long and the Ravens' passing game's not up to snuff. So now we are – I don't even know what happened with Bateman to start camp. But Odell Beckham Jr. didn't play a snap last year, and now we're a, we're a passing-based offense with Lamar Jackson throwing it with his primary target being Odell Beckham Jr.? I don't know about that, guys. I mean, I adored watching their run game under Greg Roman. The things he did with Boyle and the fullbacks, Ricard, and the pulling, people didn't know how to defend it. It made the Ravens unique. I mean, it's the reason, in my opinion, that Lamar won the MVP unanimous a few years ago. And, and now I think people did a little bit better job against it the last couple of years. But I, I am not convinced that the Ravens throwing the ball a lot with Lamar Jackson throwing to a rookie in Zay Flowers and Odell Beckham Jr., is a recipe for success. So I kind of like the Ravens under. And then I'll give you an over I like. It's the New England Patriots. Now, listen, I think they'll be last in their division. I, I, I think they'll – I mean, the Dolphins – I was looking at the Dolphins roster the other day. Do people realize how loaded the Miami Dolphins are? I mean, everywhere, everywhere. If Tua stays healthy, look out for the Dolphins. But right now, the New England Patriots season win total, guys, is six and a half. Are you kidding me? Six and a half. They move on from Matt Patricia. They have Bill O'Brien as the OC. I recognize they're the least talented team in the AFC East. There's a pretty good chance they'll finish in last in the AFC East. They're going to win seven games. I mean, with Bill Belichick, with a competent OC and O'Brien, they're going to win seven football. I mean, they're going to be seven and ten, maybe eight and nine. I love the Patriots over six and a half right now. The Anthony Richardson number is low, obviously. I don't think it takes into account the fact that Gardner Minshew will probably play at some point this year for Indianapolis, whether it's at the start of the year, like we'll see. Um, also, Indianapolis's pass catching core is absolutely terrible. Even if you want to make the case that Alec Pierce takes a step up in year number two, you want to make the case that the rookie Josh Downs could potentially be good, that Michael Pittman could have a bounce back after last year's Matt Ryan disaster. I, I don't like this wide receiving group. We have a quarterback that every, literally everyone says is not ready to play, and I understand he's going to play likely. That doesn't mean he's ready to play and he's going to play well. I, like, he's a dual threat, probably going to be running a lot. I, I like this passing yards under right now for Anthony Richardson. We'll see how he looks coming up in the preseason. 